Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20. This episode is going to be another one of our history episodes. So Clayton has joined me to talk about the city of Eol, E-O-L, which is the city that Eolindal, who is played by Tony, is from. Uh, we weren't able to get everyone together to record an, a regular deal with demons or randomized episode or anything like that. So this is just what we're doing for this week. So the city of Eol is on the south side of Telthania on the coast. And it was settled about 15 years after the settlement of Vranches, which was settled by Jinmar Ironleaf. This city was settled by Lux, Eo, and her, cla- her crewmates. And the main reason why it was settled was because of some historical and archaeological significance as well. There was, it was decent land, just a great port city, and there were lots of forests nearby and lots of food. So, before it settled, uh, when Jinmar Ironleaf and her pirates settled in Avranches, a bunch of adventurers had been traveling along the mainland or by sea to the coast to find new places to prosper and claim for Jinmar. So, Eol was one of these. So, about 13 and a half years after settling on Avranches, one of Jinmar's top sail masters, a tiefling named Lux, and her husband, Ralikos Eol, who was a tiefling and was by trade an archaeologist, they decided to go back to the island of Larhead, which we had talked about in our first history episode, which was an island, the first island that was actually landed upon by Jinmar and her pirates. And on this island, they had, after a couple of days there, they, had, they were visited by this ghost of an ancient green dragon, and kind of had scared them away from this island. So after the 13 and a half years, uh, Lux and Relicos and a few of their crewmates decided to go back to this island. And it was the first time anyone had ever come back to the island since they discovered it. So when they made it to the island, there was a constant and cold breeze that seemed to pass even through the like burliest or most bundled up crew members. And almost everyone could hear like a really low screeching sound heard on the wind. Then once night came, well, they settled on the island and then once night came and everyone fell asleep, everyone seemed to have some terrifying nightmares, about, mostly about the ghosts of the ancient green dragon. And then, in the morning, almost everyone was sick in some kind of way. About a quarter of the adventurers seemed extremely anxious or frightened. And then, there were two that had memory loss, and four even went mad. So, because of this, they left almost immediately. And, as they sailed back to Avranches, everyone thought they could hear low-pitched, evil cackling on the wind but just super faintly that maybe it wasn't there maybe it was it was probably there (laughs) so they didn't actually see the ghost dragon again no uh in a few of their dreams they saw him but they didn't actually see the ghost itself shit and that's larhead you said yeah people go there at all anymore uh not really in these not in these years anyway recently it's there has been a population that has lived there. Uh, for a while, there was a kobold cult that lived there for quite a while. Uh, we can talk about Larhead more in depth in another history episode, though. Oh, okay. Once I have more stuff to add out. <laughs> I was going to say, side quest. <laughs> Ghost green dragon of Larhead. Uh, so, once they safely got back to Avranches, everyone started to feel better again and not be sick anymore. That is until a few months later when Ralikos, the husband, Tiefling, who's an archaeologist, and five of the other crew began to fall ill. And it was unlike any other illness that anyone ever, had ever seen. It ate away both at the crew members' minds and their bodies. Eventually, they all became mad and were little more than skeletons with sagging skin. And at this point, pretty much all of the families found that they would probably be better off dead, so they ended their sufferings. Shit. So, a few months later, 
Lux decided to commemorate her husband's memory and her crewmates' memory memory by sailing and discovering more of Ron, of uh, Telthania, and to try to find any ancient ruins that they would have loved. So, Lux gathered her regular crewmates and a bunch of the widows and families of those who were sickened by Larhead, and set sail along the coast of Telthania. Along the way, Lux and her crew found a few ancient coves and caves along the cliffs of, on some of the coasts, but for the most part they didn't find anything significant, like no cave paintings or anything like that. Uh, it was mostly just places where other species might have stayed during the winter or during uh, if the tide was low or when it was high or stuff like that. This is until they found what is probably the most significant, important, and still not completely known finding of the continent to date. Oh, fuck. This is about a. This is after a few weeks of travel, and when the crew decided to go to shore to make camp and just have a few days off the ship to explore more thor- thoroughly. So Lux and six crewmates that went with her stumbled upon an illusionary, illusory wall that was shrouded by trees and brush on the side of a hill. As they entered, they were greeted by a large temple-like room. All throughout were statues and paintings dedicated to uh, Lyra, the goddess of joy. And there were also ancient stone benches and tables, an altar made of the finest silver, intricate calendars, candle candelabras, that's the word I was trying to say, that have slowly eroded over time. And everything was covered in a thick layer of dust. And it seemed like no one had been there for hundreds if not thousands of years. And But it is difficult to actually tell exactly how long this had been here, or who created it, why it was created, or anything like that. From investigations, it's assumed to have been made by some kind of humanoid. So... Once they found this place, word of the uh, ancient site began to spread, and more and more archaeologists or people, other people fascinated in history decided to come, th- come to that site. So people decided to make a actual community or village in that area. So they settled a spot that was really close to the ocean where they'd have a nice port, but still pretty close to this church or sanctum. And so eventually a hall was built there, then a museum because of that historic site, then taverns, inns, shops, and and soon the town was bustling with around a thousand people. And after that, it was found that, well, during then, it was discovered that the soil was also great for crops. And there are... tons of fruit trees and other edible plants in the nearby forests. So, investigations occurred in that temple for years upon years, and even still, and every once in a while, there's an investigation to try if they maybe found out one new significant thing. But still, no one was able to discover exactly who made the temple, or where they went after, or what happened to them. And this temple is still used for religious purposes as well, so... Is it still protected by an illusory wall? Yep. But everyone in the city knows exactly where the wall is, so, like, the brush has been cut down and stuff like that. Oh, and no one's ever tried to get rid of this illusory wall? No one's been able to. It's some super deep, powerful magic that no one has been able to get rid of. And because everyone in the old knows exactly how to get there... Yeah, it's they pretty... haven't really seen much point in trying to get rid of it. I live to break walls. It's particularly the fourth, the fourth wall. wall. Yeah, thank you for yeah. trying to butt in and steal my joke. <laughs> All right. I don't know. It's interesting. Personally, I, I would try to get rid of the wall. Mm-hmm. I know it's illusory, but it's in the way. 
I can't see everything it's inside. not really in the way, because it's just illusory. But it's in the way. I can't see what, what's past it until I go through it. What's up with that? Wouldn't be so much cooler to have, like, bead curtain wall? <laughs> so you just, like, shimmy your way through it. You should bring that up with the mayor uh, or the lord of Eol, except he's most likely be, been captured. Yeah, Eol, the city we've been ignoring for, like, 12 episodes. He, most of you have been ignoring. Tony's been wanting to go there for, Aylor like, and 20 Bell episodes the now. the least yeah, important Bell. character <laughs> in the campaign. Least important character. Everybody, here, okay, here comes the important list. Number one. Okay, but Ailrindel is a revenant sworn to kill Artemis, the leader of the Fridanus. So I'd say that makes him pretty important. Top of the list. Number one, Blaze. Number two, Farron. Number three, Lazarus. Number four, Ryan. Then there's Ailrindel. And then Zarathos. <laughs> oh, and I can't forget Ryan's super important. F- twin that ryan ignores <laughs> he's very bottom because ryan hasn't talked to him yet yeah. i'm sure as soon as ryan talks to him he'll be important again oh and even under that Fazimir is <laughs> dead he was like number three and then farron killed him so that's too bad but yeah, yeah no blaze up top and out third from bottom sure did uh, i forget I, did i forget somebody uh not any of our main crew oh good Good. Uh, Ooh. There's like King of Avranches, King of King unimportant. Zix. Unimportant. They're, King Ulysses. All those guys aren't important at all. I forgot. The Mind Flayer. Easily third place. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead now, too. I know it's sad, but more important than, you know, Ryan. Or... Oh, the the uh, shop, the art shop keeper. Art shop keeper is probably a number bitch. one. They were trying to scare. Gamma garbage, <laughs> garbage. Uh, they she needs to make a profit. I don't what care. can I say? Except she did definitely scam Baron. Hundred percent. I'll admit that. But the mind flare is important because he gave us that stone we never use or care or talk about. Yeah, that I had totally forgot about for like two episodes after that happened. I don't even know why we took that stone. There's no point. <laughs> It got us you to can, a bottom can, of a lake. Yeah, you can get to the bottom of oceans. Yeah, stuff. but then we have a random force field <laughs> around our cart that like, will probably just get in the way sometimes. We're trying to go through like a, a door, or like a, there'll be like a crate in the way and we'll be going and our force field will bump it and we'll break this crate and we'll just make a mess. The force field is only against water. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, when you were in the mind player's room, the water was the only thing that was out of place. Fair enough. I didn't put one and two together to make three. I think I said it back then. You probably did, yeah. but Blaze was not... He didn't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> saw that stone. He was like, that's cool. It can stay there. But no, we took it. We also almost set a fire cooking fish. Yeah. You guys almost indoors. like suffocated yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm the dumb one, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, you little illusory wall that no one has ever tried to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. So... That site is still the place of worship for all of the people who worship Lyra, which is one of the main religions in Eol, mostly due to that site. Mm-hmm. And shortly after the discovery of this sanctum or temple, there was another discovery that occurred about 10 miles away. Just by the same, by Lux and a few of her crewmates as well. Did they find another illusory wall? No. What they found... An illusory floor? No. Ceiling? No. Did they find drugs? Probably. <laughs> but that's not of, <laughs> of significance as what they did find. What they found in the center of a plane in one of the near... Like in the center of one of the nearby forests. Like a clearing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A grove? Yeah, a grove a would meadow? be a better word. Grove. Grove, meadow, clearing. Yeah. Was a wrecked ship. Just just like a ship? Yeah. Like a whole ship. Yeah. I would say meadow, not grove. Sure. Just because I think meadows are technically larger, but... Yeah. But and fuck! Yeah, the, Why? Ship, the ship seemed to be four... Like, around 400 years old 
at the time, which means yeah, it's like time. super old now. Yeah. And there was no writing on it that survived. And no one could figure out how it came from or how it came to be there. And they found that they couldn't actually, the ship couldn't actually break down or be moved or anything like that. No matter the magic that was tried to be used on it or the strength of anyone, they couldn't wreck the ship, take anything off it that was like connected to it or do anything like that. And there were only a few things that were actually still in the ship itself. One was a ruby skull that looked humanoid in the captain's cabin. And then there, the only other things were the flag of the ship, which is a flag of a waning gibbous moon on a field of black with silver stars and constellations throughout. Oh, fancy as fuck. A gold and silver hand telescope, a quill made of obsidian, an empty oak chest, the bed chambers, except it was just like bare, bare, bare bed chambers, and a sextant made of ivory. Is all that stuff like gone now? Probably in the museum of Eol? Yeah, exactly. So you're saying the we f- have to break into the museum of Eol and take these items There's n- because they're important. If you wanted to seal them, you probably could, especially if. The Sardana have taken over Eol? Probably. It's uh, been the- a solid, like, month we were supposed to go. <laughs> and you were clearly just trying to buy us time every time you brought up. No, it it is about a day... No, it is, it's probably been... As of recording right now, it's probably been about three days since Elendil first felt the presence of Artemis near Eol. Okay. Never mind, we have plenty of time to rob the <laughs> museum. And the like, the ship's flag is, of course, still on the ship itself because it c- couldn't actually be torn or taken down or anything like that. Have you tried setting it on fire? Yep. Damn. That was going to be my second thing after cutting. <laughs> uh, and the ship was missing any documentation, so any maps or scrolls of any kind and anything like that, too. Uh, the only thing that could be helpful for determining where it was going was the sextant, because it was still in the position it was at before. And maybe the flag, although the flag is unknown to everyone. No one knows uh, where the flag is from or what it is. What it stands for. Yeah. Exactly. What, what's its mantra? Yeah. Could just be Starry Night. Yeah, could be. Yeah. I kind of really want to steal that stuff. <laughs> like, I'm still kind of on that gauge. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, this ruby skull? I would like that. I would like to hold that. Didn't you? Oh, I, I think Aelernella has another ruby skull. No, sapphire skull. Just the one you guys found in the ship underneath the ocean. Or yeah. underneath the lake. You did mention a skull there. Yeah, because so, I think it's the one that has dancing lights imbued into it. Mm-hmm. So if we combine the ruby skull with the sapphire skull, then. do we get a purple skull, an amethyst skull? Sure. Because red plus blue goes purple. Color theory. Well, it does. Yeah, I know it does, but that's not what happens what the skull is about. Do they come fused together to make one bigger skull that's like the ultimate skull, like a Power Ranger? It's morphin' time, except it's like gemstone skulls all throughout Delvania. Be an epic side quest gauge. <laughs> you can call it the color theory side quest. I mean, like different <laughs> colors, and then you make different combinations, and then the different colored skulls do different things. Sapphire one is dancing lights, the amethyst one is power word kill. Oh my god, it's perfect. <laughs> Just throwing out ideas for you, bro. That's not what the skull does. Okay. I'm going to take it anyway. <laughs> Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. If you guys ever actually do, go to Eol. It's my next place to go. It's my next step. We just have to wait a few days for the wizard to get his spell slots back. <laughs> 
Sorry, I got yeah. sidetracked again. Uh, no worries. Uh, so the only thing that's <laughs> been able to kind of be discovered about the ship was that it seems like it was made for people of human or humanoid or elven height. Okay. So not anything like for dwarves or halflings. gnomes, halflings, anything like that. About four gnomes under a trench coat. That's too tall. It's too probably tall. be... Three gnomes. Well, actually, gnomes are, what, three feet? Yeah, so how about three gnomes? It would probably be two gnomes. Well, no, three, because when you're sitting on their shoulder, they lose about half their height because their legs, <laughs> like, they just sit, so, good like, point. really. Yeah, good point. Yeah. That, that's what the entire sh- crew, crew was. You, you got me there. It was a ship full of <laughs> gnomes that were in trench coats stand- sitting on top of each other. I fucking knew it. This mystery is my bitch. That's what the flag was for. It signified the the moon. The uh, No, uh, each constellation was of a gnome. And then the moon stands for when all the constellations come together. Yeah, it's yeah. one big star. I, Just like when you take a red skull and a blue <laughs> skull, you make an amethyst skull. Which has power word kill. I figured it out. One plus one plus one is three. Yeah, that's 100% it, Titan. Mm-hmm. I fucking knew it. You've turned... Th- You've discovered the history of that ship. I've solved the case. Damn it, I'm good. So, (laughs) investigations have occurred on that ship and in the temple for years upon years, and they're still being occurring even now, and very little more has been discovered any time. And then... Those are the only two major significant findings or historical findings in Yule. But the temple was is the biggest one that has been discovered anywhere in Teltania. And then over the years, Yule has seen quite a few battles and wars. This is mostly due to how religious the city was for a long time. So a lot of Wars about religion and wars for other of other marauders trying to actually sack the temple or sack the ship themselves. And would you say you all caused most of the, the fights then? If they were super religious, were they the ones like uh, causing a lot of problems, being all pushy and stuff? For the most part, it is usually outsiders that were attacking. And that Yol was defending, but it was probably about maybe like twenty percent of the wars were started by Yol, and then the rest were more defenseful. Okay, mostly people just wanted to sack the city, yeah, to raid the temple and steal stuff. Yeah. Okay, cool. Or people being angered that, or like civil wars with people being angered at the high percentage of one religion being in the city. Okay. Because uh, about even now, about seventy percent of the population worship Lyra, and then there are other shrines and churches within the city, but that are for Lathander, Pelor, Ephesus has a really small one, Saloon, Sol, and it, it it is the one that you worship. I just forget what it's called too. I own. Yeah, the goddess of. Knowledge. I want to say knowledge. I can't yeah. quite remember if I'm I pretty sure it's actually knowledge, knowledge yeah. but yeah. Yeah, so there's that church as well. And a couple other small ones that uh, uh, not many people go to. Uh, and then during the war against humans, Yol didn't actually join the fray until a few months after the actual battle started. This is mostly because they were kind of seeing what is occurring and trying to judge how long the battle, how long the war would take. But when they did join, they sent the largest amount of forces to the war, like in comparison to population, of any city in Tultania. Oh, well. Against the humans. The humans, the majority of them themselves were fighting. So that doesn't include humans. Uh, and for the last couple of Two, maybe 300 years, Yol has been becoming a city that is very military-based as well. 
So about every three out of seven military commanders and leaders through Tilthania are usually from Eol or had or learned in Eol or started out uh, fighting in Eol. Okay, so it's very militarized now. Yeah. Well, the Elendil's mother is uh, yeah. a military member, right? Yeah, I think both his parents were, and his grandparents were as well, I think. Funny, you think growing up in a military family, Elendil would not think- be so stupid as to randomly teleport into the middle of a battlefield alone with no allies or and weapons. And just throw a marble. Yeah. Yeah. Guess, he not, guess not, though. Guess not. That's fine. He's stupid. Bottom of my list. Third from the bottom. That's why he's dead. But not quite dead. Uh, so next I'll talk a little bit more about the demographics. So the majority of the people in Eol are elves, which is about 60% of them. Or around 12,000 of the people in the city. And this could also, this can be further divided uh, to the sub races. So the va- vast majority of that is wood elves with 70%, and then the rest of the 30 is high elves, then drow, shatterkai, sea elves, and then um, eladrin. Are drow and shatterkai kind of like ostracized? Uh, not so Just much. because they're technically like. And compared to elves, like, elves don't yeah. really like drow, and drow don't really like elves. Yeah. Uh, historically, but then, I don't know. It has been helped because, well, in the last couple generations, because I think Eolendil's parents and grandparents are drow, and they rose up quickly to... I should actually double-check that before I go saying this of confidently. It's okay. Tony. Tony's very malleable. Yeah, He'll I, do as he's fucking told. <laughs> I didn't kill his, his dad. <laughs> Tony would be like, what do you mean? I'm a tiefling. <laughs> it's actually something stupid that Tony might say. <laughs> yeah, Elendil's dad is actually alive according to his backstory, but I just messed stuff up, so so it's n- now his dad is dead. Uh, that's okay. Adds more to his backstory that yeah. he never mentions or deepens. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to double check this. Yeah, he is a drow. Okay, good. He is a drow? Yeah. Damn, I'm not going to lie to you. This whole time we've been playing, thought he was human. <laughs> never really? questioned it, never mentioned it. I always thought he was human. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, just he's, not paying attention. He's been a revenant like for 90% of the quest. So I know, and he keeps mentioning he doesn't need to sleep. And yeah. part of me is like, oh, probably the elf thing. But then I'm also like, nah, he's a revenant. That's why. <laughs> I'm just dumb. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention. Thought... Thought Ryan was a gnome. <laughs> Actually, no, okay. no, no. We mentioned that he is a dwarf so often. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, just talking about the other races. The next largest racial demographics are half half elves at around fifteen percent of the population, then tieflings, halflings, and then gnomes, humans, dragonborns, Ercalcra, etc. Is the last little bit. I have a question. Yeah. Since humans are like super rare for half elves, it's not always half elf, half human. No. Right? Yeah. So, like, what does a half tiefling, half elf look like? I'd say kind of like a. Would they look just like an elf, but with like weird skin color? I mean, they wouldn't have horns. Oh, wait. Half elf as in elf and tiefling offspring? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd say it'd be like a just I mean, like an elf with maybe horns, kind of darker eyes, and maybe a bit of a that, tinge of color and skin. Isn't that just a tiefling though? Because tieflings are basically elves with horns, aesthetically, yeah. and like blue or red skin or purple. I guess it like it'll just be like the combination of both traits. I mean, both species, but just in the middle of them. So, like, and it it depend on the person, too, because of genetics. So there might be some that look exactly like 
like tieflings, but they're half elf, half tiefling, and then some that look exactly like elves. But that's just the genetic pool. Did I tell you about the character I made for Tony for our Secret Santa? No. Oh, okay. Oh, I love this character. This is getting way off topic, but I don't care right it's now. It's okay. <laughs> Fuck it. You so, got nudes all around us? Yeah. yeah. Sp- not sp- we're not sponsored by Nude Vodka Soda, which is delicious. 100%. Please that sponsor no us. No one has heard of Nude, <laughs> except you. It's what my, my friends in cameras drink as well. Oh. I've never heard of it. I'm cool, so <laughs> clearly cool kids don't know about it. Uh, so, <laughs> the characters I made for... Tony for Secret Santa. Uh, it is two siblings. Oh dear. They are both the offspring of a centaur and a minotaur, but the minotaur had like a horse like head or horse like top. Oh boy. And so the son, they were twins, the son what had the racial genetics of the bottom half of the minotaur and the top half of the centaur. So just a human, just looked like a human. Oh my! Oh my god! And then the daughter was the opposite of that, so had the head of a minotaur, but like horse-like, and then the body of a centaur, so like a horse. So she is just a horse. I was super happy with with that. <laughs> Let me guess: the brother would often ride the horse. His no, sister. They they didn't get along. They didn't get oh, along. And the, oh, the the. Girl's name was Haley, and then the guy's name was Orb, because that's the name of a racehorse, or like a Kentucky Derby racehorse or something from like the 1970s or whatever. Super proud of those characters. Uh, so back to <laughs> Eel. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. Uh. Uh, so there are only two major festivals apart from the ones that are celebrated worldwide. So besides like the one similar to Christmas or Halloween or like the Remembrance Day type one from when the war against humans ended. Oh, okay. Is there so, uh, horse racing? You say Kentucky, Kentucky world thing that does not real in this, this world. Uh, no, that, is, horse that is just the character I made. Uh, that wasn't in this world. Well, I guess it could be if it's a one-off in this world. But can we, uh, can we have horse racing anyway? Is me a reason to waste money in game? Yeah, you could race horses. I'm gonna race the lizards. <laughs> sure. Right. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I'm distracted by the yeah. dumbest parts of this. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so the two main festivals are the Festival of Joy. And the Festival of the Ship. So, the Festival of Joy is uh, somewhat of a religious festival. It's mainly celebrated by those who worship Lyra, but anyone can join it. And it begins with an optional prayer at the historic church or temple. And then a large picnic potluck happens in the fields between the church and city. Then after that, a secret Santa type gift exchange happens, and then the day ends with music and entertainment. Okay, cool. Uh, this isn't a small festival; like probably around five thousand, maybe six thousand people go to it each year. It's a huge ass potluck. Yeah, you're not getting that casserole dish back. Oh yeah, yeah. A casserole dish is gone. Bye bye. <laughs> The criminals are going to enjoy themselves at the Festival of Joy, stealing dishes and selling them on the black market. The black market in Stillsby? Exactly. One booth is stolen casserole dishes, and the other one <laughs> is slightly diluted medicine that really <laughs> fucking sucks when you drink it, you know? Like The Third Man? Great movie. Great movie. Never saw it. Uh, it's like old black and white movie. You wouldn't, yeah. The only reason I know is because I, I was a film student. I ever mentioned I was a film student? Pretty proud of that. I don't Can't... think you've mentioned it in our podcast. Oh, no, but it's important to me. Please say you're proud of me. Proud of you. Thank you. I really needed to hear that. <laughs> anyway, Festival of Joy. Potluck yeah. dinner. Worshipping Lady of Joy in yeah. life. And Secret then, Santa. Secret Santa. And gifts. then music and entertainment. At music night. and entertainment. 
if I go to this place and fucking Zarathos shows up playing another <laughs> song, I swear to God, I'm going to kill that bard. He definitely would have been invited this next year. Yeah, fucking Zarathos. Also, I'm making actual music for Zarathos, so hopefully I can, I'll can i release that sometime soon. Uh, and then the second festival is the Festival of the Ship, and it's kind of focused on that unknown ship. The anomaly that is yeah, a anomaly, random yeah. ship. Yeah. Does this ship look wrecked? Like, kind of like split in half, or like, oh, super broken down, or is it just like a ship? Uh, the bottom of the hull is like smashed into pieces. Okay. So that it, it somehow ended up sanded almost straight up. Oh. So it almost seems like it had just landed there from the sky or something. Right. And that the bottom of it got entirely broken. And it just sits on the remains like that. And the front, like the the bow? Yeah. Is that the front? Uh, Pretty sure the front is the so. bow. And it's just sticking up into the sky, kind of? No, uh, it's still facing like forwards. Oh, okay. So like if this is the ship mast going like this, that it would have been, it looks like this. Oh, so it's still right up, right yeah. side up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got yeah. you. Yeah. Gotta love using visual indicators on yeah. podcasts. Exactly, it's perfect. It's like the time I tried to have the character that does sign language. <laughs> that was such a bad idea. Yeah. It went over well. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you forgot about him in our list of characters who are most important to the story. Oh, B-Snack yeah. isn't important at all. His name is literally B-Snack. He led you to the depths. I would have found it anyway. <laughs> I love that guy, though, for real. I mean, his hair changes color. And he uses American Sign Language. Or would it be Tothanian Sign Language? TSL. Probably TSL. TSL just sounds like... A TV program that yeah. plays the uh, Little People Big World. <laughs> <laughs> TLC. Yeah. <laughs> the learning. It was Don't the, go the learning. chasing waterfalls. I'm trying to think of what TLC stood for. The Learning Channel. Channel, yeah. Learning Channel, yeah. That's yeah. it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also a band. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Isn't that TLC? I don't know. Pretty sure, I don't know pretty sure they're called TLC. You know you've heard the song, though. I don't think so. What? Don't go chasing waterfalls. Doesn't sound Stick familiar to, to me. the rivers and the lakes that you used to. It's such, you know that song. You just you just need to hear it from someone who can sing. Uh, so, back to Eol, because I should actually talk, talk about Eol in this episode titled I'm The History enough. of Eol. We can just move on now. No, I'm Honestly, just kidding. Good, but, uh, Festival of the Ship. Yeah, so it's focused on the on anomaly of the ship near the city. Mm. And it starts out with a pilgrimage to the ship, which is about like a five-hour walkway, three-hour, something like that. Five-hour hike? That's not a festival. Yeah. That's a... No, probably like a three- or four-hour hour hike way. And do you, you hike to the ship? Yeah. Oh, Okay. Then a meal is cooked at the site. Everyone kind of just hangs out, plays cards, tells their own conspiracy theories on how the ship got there it was and aliens, what it means. Man. The aliens did, just like they built the pyramids, bro. And also, did you know that the people from Stan, the original owners, are the ones who stole all the gold and there are lizard <laughs> people in the sewers, man. It's the guys from Stan who... Uh, sank the ship here. Oh my god, man, it all makes sense, except that Sten was, like, built... <laughs> way after. Way after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no. Uh, yeah, it would have been, like, a hundred or so years after, I think. Yeah. Also, it's the green dragon. It's the ghost of the green dragon is <laughs> why the ship is there. Sure. The green dragon is Lyra. What? <laughs> I've cracked the code! <laughs> Fuck yeah. She sailed the ship here. To avoid the green dragon. To avoid the green dragon. And then after she landed there, she decided to make a temple dedicated to herself God behind an bitch. illusory wall. Why she put the illusory wall is still the real <laughs> mystery. What was the purpose, lady? <laughs> so as I was saying about the festival of the ship, <laughs> yeah. uh, besides that like story time theory time or whatever there's also a competition to see if anyone can actually move the boat itself oh, through like magic the or strength sword in the stone exactly yeah and except there's no real prize 
Yeah, because everyone fails every single time. Oh. What happens if you do move it? Then... You become king of the old? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you get a commemorative trophy. <laughs> and a, one free, un- a ticket for one free meal for the next uh, festival. Also, everyone panics because they don't know what yeah. to do now. The ship's gone. Yeah. Do we just cancel the festival of the <laughs> ship? What do we do? Like, the green dragon is here. The ship's sailing away. All right, yeah. Who knows what happens? An illusory wall was just put up randomly somewhere. Oh, oh not another one. <laughs> oh, my. Or I was going to think, like, if you move the ship, it's like a clicking sound, and then a little bubble pops up in the right screen. A door is open somewhere, and the illusory wall is just gone. For <laughs> 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 fuck's sake. <laughs> And then the night ends with a big party <laughs> and drinking on the ship and a lot of, like, singing of, like, sailing songs and maritime songs Some and shanties. stuff like that. Sea shanties. Thank you. Yeah. I got your back. Yeah. And then the next day, everyone, usually super hungover, cleans everything up and they travel back to Eel. There's a lot of littering, though. It's a real problem. It, it's usually taken care of. City Council's been working on it, but it's become a serious problem the last couple of years. There's been a few times where it's been terrible, but just pick up your usually the the bar Lord of Eol is at the party and gets on people's backs because of that stuff. How hard is it to just throw your granola bar wrapper into the fire and let it burn? <laughs> like, come on, man. You don't need to leave yeah. it on the grass. It's just irresponsible. We have to take care of nature. Gotta in- inhale those noxious gases, too. <sighs> Would you rather I leave the wrapper on the <laughs> ground? <laughs> There's the thing called garbage. Oh, is that canon now? Garbage <laughs> cans are canon now? All right. Fucking, they're real. All right. I, I want you to remember that the next time I do something stupid with a garbage can. <laughs> okay. Okay? But they're canon, so you can't get mad at me. Sure. When I put Ryan in one, see if he can crawl out or not. He won't. He's too small. <laughs> stupid dwarf. <laughs> Fuck that guy. And then the only other stuff I have about Eol right now is it's a few notable people. It's mostly just military captains of one rank or another or someone who led a major battle in the war against humans or in the other battles that are like saved the city of Eol and stuff like that. Uh, They're not really a notable, much of a, they're not really a city that's too notable about trades there are obviously trades there but there's not a whole lot of people who would be considered masters of their trades just people who are good enough to get by with their work and stuff like that so it's not like a specialized city yeah. it's mostly just their shtick is that they all worship lyra there's a weird boat in the middle of a grove and a illusory wall and a random temple that they've used for generations now yeah and that they're like recently more militarized okay. it, it is a nice looking city like it's beautiful like the city planners do it, and the agriculturists do a beautiful job of keeping like all the gardens and like uh city centers and stuff like that top in- of the line sewage system sure I'm <laughs> just throwing out <laughs> suggestions. I mean, they have sewers, right? Yeah. 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 Sewers are canon now? Yep. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had a lot of cookies. I'm super <laughs> hopped up on trigger right now. So it's like, it's just a really nice looking city with all the gardens and the groves within the city. And they have a few statues throughout the city commemorating those who fought in War against humans and the other important wars they've been a part of. And important figures like Beer. Bear isn't from there. Beer. Be- <laughs> Come on, I feel no, like there's my whole gonna, job there's in not this gonna, series is to put statues of Bear in every There's city. not going to be a statue of Bear in Eol. Okay. That hurts my feelings, but okay. <laughs> uh, and... It's basically what I've got at the moment. Do you have any questions about anything? Um, you said there are other uh, religions there. Yeah. Uh, are they kind of like the whole reason they were in so many wars, you said, was because their deep devotion to Lyra caused rifts between like certain people. Yeah. So are those other churches or temples or like little like worship ground area, the hymns, hums, whatever you want to call it? They're kind of, like, looked down on them by the majority of the public. Like, do people 
kind of go like, well, why would you worship Hephaestus when you could worship Lyra? Is that kind of like a whole vibe I get? Like if I go to Eol, mm-hmm. every like third person is like, oh, uh, no Jesus, no peace. <laughs> no Jesus, no peace kind of thing. Except instead of Jesus, it's Lyra. Yeah, I was just going to correct that because we have not made Jesus canon in yeah. our universe yet. Working on it. We already made Shrek canon, I think. Our adventure is Shrek, the corn to Tony. <laughs> I fucking hate. Uh, so, <laughs> to the point you asked about, <laughs> yeah, uh, there are definitely a fair amount of people who are like that. Uh, th- the fact that Lyra is, I think, a lawful good or neutral good figure. She's a D- or DT. Yeah, a lawful good, I believe. Yeah helps it not be so much like that but with any religion really there's some people who look down on other religions and stuff like that right and it's definitely worse off when everyone worshipped Lyra in the city but now that there's uh, other religions within the city it's not as bad but i'm assuming any kind of like true neutral or chaotic or evil like deities are like hated on basically yeah there's no evil deities in yeah but what evil. about like say chaotic good would that be kind of looked down on them because just because like chaos and like usually some yeah. chaotic goods chaotic good deities are fucking crazy like yeah. trickery kind of nonsense to a point they would in some circumstances and to some people but like i said before it would, it would just be the minority of the religion that thinks that okay I just wanted to know, curious, yeah. since I, I was assuming most of the other churches that are in Lyra are probably small in comparison to, like, Lyra. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, like, the... And Festus is actually just, like, a small, like... It used to be an outhouse, but now they've made it, like, a shack, and they yeah. got, like, a cool little hammer statue in there. That's my thought. It, it, it is pr- <laughs> kind of like that. Like, it definitely isn't a major shrine or church or anything like that. Yeah. It probably has, like between 20 and 50 people who actually go to it regularly right which is a very small portion oh yeah if you said there's like how many people in the city like uh twenty thousand. yeah okay maybe it'd be around 100 people i like the idea of 20 <laughs> yeah. it's like a soup kitchen you just walk in there and be like hey hephaestus bros hephaestus bros that's what they call themselves the hephaestus bros um oh yeah and like there is only the one actual church that de- they de- dedicated to Lyra, and that's the one that's like the historic site. Mm-hmm. There are lots of other like shrines or statues that people can pray at and stuff like that dedicated to Lyra within the city, but there's no actual actual Lyra church in the city. No, they all just go to that one temple. Yeah. So a pretty big temple then. Yeah, huge. Okay, okay. sick. Like I think I said it was like built into a hill. Did I say that? Let's see if I said that. Um, I don't think I said that. So it is shrouded by trees and brush. Oh yeah, it was on the side of a hill. So just a large hill and the entire shrine was built under the hill. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about about Eol? Um, so it has absolutely no connection to Larhead, save, save for it was Lux uh, yeah. Eol. Yeah. Who traveled to Larhead and then ran away, and then that led her to this good plot of land. Yeah, yeah. Like she never went back to Larhead after that event. Okay, so there's not really any connection between the two. Not really, until recent years. With well, not really recent, but when people actually started going back to Larhead again, mm-hmm. there were a few people from Eol who had went with them to Larhead and came back after that. And they got the weird disease still. Oh, okay. Uh, so they pretty much went to the island at that point and kind of got scared off because there were, there, that was the time where there was the cult of kobolds on the island. Right. So they kind of got that. scared off from the island because of that. I love that. I love kobolds. <laughs> They're so cute. They're like pet lizards that <laughs> snuck out of their tank. And now murder people, which makes them slightly bad, but adorable. <laughs> like adorable murderers. 
Like you find that murderer, you're like, ah, I should turn you in, but oh, look at his eyes. Look at your eyes. And then boom, you get stabbed. I don't think I have any questions, though. Okay. Uh, I mean, if I do, they'll be answered soon. Because I think that's our next stop is the old. Or Aylandale will literally have a panic attack. Well, like, it's a difficult spot where you guys are right now because... There are a lot of different paths you could take, we and... Have s- it's not really, though, because, like, we put this off so long, and I know Aylandale slash Tony is literally going to fucking yeah. freak out if we don't go to Eol, yeah. so... It's time to time to move on with the main quest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess if that's it, then I think we'll end the episode there. Okay. So, thanks for listening, and thanks, Clayton, for being a part of the history. Ah... Uh... I love it. I love the history. And the boats and the kobolds. Mostly the kobolds. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks for listening. I almost said watching. That would have been awkward. Well, it's a YouTube video, so you can... People do watch... Like, we don't actually do a podcast. It's all on YouTube. I know, but I mean... Do we do we put lots of animations on? Not many, no. And they probably aren't watching. They're just listening. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while, I put, like, a sonic picture. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Only, God damn it. Gotta go fast. <laughs> Speaking of that, we gotta leave quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 <laughs>